Hello again. We just looked at getting the components and making the resultant. In this case, we're going to kind of look at the opposite. And we've got one of the most cliche physics problems there is, some block on a ramp sliding down. Well, in this case, we're going to be looking at the force of gravity acting on this object. And I mean, we don't need to know the exact details, but we, well, what I'll tell you is the force of gravity acts straight downwards. But not all that force of gravity matters. You can think some of that gravity is pushing against the ramp. Only the part or that's parallel to the ramp, going in, say, this direction, will actually cause the, the um, block to move down the ramp. I mean, we might have friction opposing it, but we're ignoring that for now. We just want to look at this right here. This is the force of gravity, which I'm going to represent as Fg. Great. Straight down. But again, we only care about the for part of the force of gravity that will cause this the block to slide down the ramp. That's what's going to cause it to accelerate and move down the ramp. The part going in this direction, because we can split this, we can think in vectors, we can split this force of gravity into components. We can think it has a component that, two components perpendicular to each other. One that is perpendicular to the ramp, so at 90 degrees to the ramp, and another that's parallel to the ramp. And we can call this one, if we want, say, FGY. That's a very common thing in physics. Force of gravity in the y direction, FGX. This might be something you've seen time and time again in physics if you've taken it. Great. But what do we know? We need FG, if we had a number, if we were told what FG is, we'd be in a good spot. But we still need this angle right here, theta. If we have an angle and a length, we can get the other two things. We can figure out what FGX is, which is really what we want. The amount of force that's causing this to move in this direction. Great. Well, we're going to have to use some knowledge of triangles. And I'll switch colors for a second. Because since this is straight down, and this is a flat ground, this should be a 90 degree angle. Force gravity straight down, so this should form a 90 degree. And if this is 45, well, this should also be 45. Remember, a triangle adds up to 180. So 45 plus 90 is 135, plus 45 is 180. So this is really a 45 degree angle here. But we also have to keep in mind that this line right here, we said this is the line that is perpendicular to our ramp. The part that doesn't matter, the force of gravity that is just pushing this onto the ramp. So this also, entire thing, by definition, is 90 degrees. So if this whole thing is 90, well, this must be 90 minus 45. Because this tiny spot is 45, this is 90 minus 45, or also 45. Probably should have used other numbers to drive this home. If this was 30, this would be 60, and therefore this would be 30. We're going to find this and this are the same. So when you do these problems, you're going to find this angle and this angle are the same. We solve theta is 45. Great. Okay. Well, what were we trying to do? We wanted to find out the force of gravity that's causing this to slide. Remember, that's what we, we can figure out the force of gravity. We might be given that in the problem. We might solve it somehow in the problem. It doesn't matter. It would just be something we know. But we want to find out what component of that is actually pushing this thing down the ramp. Not pushing it into the ramp, but pushing it down. So we need this FGX. So what do we really got? We've got a triangle. Let's even redraw it out for a second. We've got a good old right angle triangle. Here's our hypotenuse. And what we know is this angle is 45. This is FG. Good old FGX, FGY. If I want FGX, what do I got? This angle. And I have FG. Supposedly, I theoretically would know what that is. Well, so what I got, I got the opposite from the angle and the hypotenuse. Which one is that? Well, we start going so katoa. Ah, sine. So, opposite over hypotenuse. So sine of 45 is opposite our FGX over hypotenuse FG. So if we wanted the x component of the force that's actually causing this to move, we would have multiply both sides by fg. 
So we get f g sine 45 equals f g x. If we knew what f g was, we just multiply by sine 45 and get our value for the force acting in that direction. Uh, if we wanted to, we could also do the same thing for f g y. In this case, it's not really important for us, but we could have just as easily wrote cos of 45. And I should be writing degrees as always. Cos of 45. Cos is adjacent to our hypotenuse. So F, G, Y all over F, G. Very similarly, we get F, G, cos 45. Oops. Equals F, G, Y. And this is something you're going to do again and again. And in physics, you would actually want this FGY as well, probably, to calculate things like friction, but not important for our purposes. It's just having this hypotenuse and an angle will keep letting us do components. Find the x, the y component. It's something you're going to do time and time again in physics in many different chapters. And you're going to do it in many other courses as well. So hopefully this helps.